Thank you for joining us on Promising Me Unleashed with our guest, Patty Rice, the author of Your Morning Routine, and Dr. Jonathan Shepard, board, child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist who share insight into overcoming grief. It is indeed a pleasure to have me, Patty Rice, Christian best-selling author, the author of several novels and nonfiction books that really inspire people sharing the gospel and also sharing hope. Thank you so much for joining us on Promising Me Unleashed. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate being here with you. Wonderful. Your morning routine, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, where you shared 12 strategies in helping people overcome and heal from grief. And I think no more time than now is it so necessary, considering what we've gone through these last two years. In just Mm -hmm. two years, we have experienced in our time period, death in a way that we really never, I can say uh, that I've never experienced before. And so I thank you for taking um, the courage and being inspired and led to write such a book. So just share with us what your heart was behind the book um, and what your intent is for it. Well, it's really amazing um, that God would even have me write such a book. I was very surprised when in my prayer time one day, he downloaded to me the book title, Your Morning Routine. Mm-hmm. And at first he, I thought he was talking about, you know, the ret- routine that we all go through in the morning when we're getting ready, dressed and all of that. And um, he said, no, and he spelled it out just as you spelled it out. And he said, I really want you to talk with my people about grief because I need my people to have practical solutions on how to walk through grief and come out on the other side. And so um, he began to share with me and kind of bring me back to and through some, you know, my own journey and some experiences that I'd had. And where it sparked was um, years ago, I was working with this young lady, um, may have been around 2005, 2006. And she um, was just sad. She was depressed. And you could see it like it was like she was wearing it. Mm -hmm. And she wound up uh, taking off from work one day. She had kind of just started. And when she came in the next day, just really sad, really weepy. And I was like, what is wrong? You know, what's going on? Is there anything I can do to help? And she wound up sharing with me that she had lost her mom. And it really had put her in just such a severe state of grief. And when I found out that her mother had passed away 10 years before, I was very surprised because the way she was responding and reacting it seemed very fresh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, wow, what, what's going on? Because this young lady, she began to kind of share with me how she hadn't been able to get past it. Um, you know, she spent many days just kind of laying around the house on the weekends, not doing anything. She had kind of let, let go of life. Mm. And it just kind of saddened me. And I went to God about it. And I was like, God, you know, I really need you to help this, this young woman get past this, you know, and, and really heal, begin to heal. And so I prayed for her and everything like that. And the other piece I had told God, I said, God, and I don't want to grieve like this. So teach me how to grieve in a way that I can, you know, get into a healing state. Right. So that was my why for writing the book, um, you know, and I just had in my my mind and in my heart the entire time that people were going to be blessed by it because it is very practical. God is very simple in the things that he tells us to do. We're the ones that overcomplicate a lot of things. Yes. And so these were very practical steps that he was showing me, see, look, I showed you how to do this. See, look, I showed you how to do that. And this is how it impacted you. And this is how it, you know, sparked your healing. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so um, just having in mind people who are, who have been hit by grief 
and they don't know which way is up. They don't know where to turn, what to do. You know, how do I get my life back? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a very disarming kind of situation when you get hit with grief. Mm -hmm. So yeah, being able to look at a, a guide, a handbook that can kind of tell you, well, you know, let me suggest to you, if you try this, mm -hmm. you know, this may help you because this is how it helped me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's awesome. I, I think people, well, we know people process grief differently. And I, I don't ever want to be the type of person that puts a time frame around your grief. Um, mm -hmm. The biblical time frame is really short. If we kind of think about it, you know, they have 30 days to mourn. And after that, listen, get, get on the road, you know, it's time to move. But um, I think that people um, have different degrees of grief. And then there are mm -hmm. different types of grieving. Um, I can attest to personally, I just lost my sister in November. And there were two types of grief. Um, there were griefs of the loss and then grief of disappointment mm -hmm. um, for other circumstances that surrounded that, that situation. And so um, in your book, you know, as you outline strategies of grief, do you address some of the types of grief or, um, you know, just some of those things that, that may vary because people do grieve differently? Mm -hmm. And that is very true. And that's something that I learned um, as well, just in my own walk, mm -hmm. um, because it was interesting when I lost my mom, there was a particular way I grieved. It was a lot of tears. It was a lot of sitting and reflecting, things like that. Um, and she, uh, she, she had a massive heart attack wow. and we lost her in that way. Now with my dad, it was very different because he had Alzheimer's and it was a longer, and he also had cancer and it was a longer, it was a suffering that we had to watch and mm -hmm. be intimately a part of right. and grieving was very different. And what I noticed as well is that grieving among my four other siblings Everyone, you know, accepted it and went through it differently. You know, there, there were ones that were like we talked about with the crying. There were ones that were, got quiet ones. You know, it got a little argumentative. Different things happened with different ones. Um, but yeah, the, in the book, I do address those things and I talk about how it is a process, how we do need to give ourselves grace in the midst of it. And how we do need to understand it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. There's, there's nothing that you can say, okay, this is the formula for, you know, going through grief. And um, I want to, I want to also um, just share when God had me first look at the word grief and look at the word mourning, mm -hmm. I, I came to understand that grief is the emotion that we experience mm -hmm. and mourning is how we respond to it and how we walk through it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that mourning process looks different for everybody and what will work for one mm -hmm. may not work for another person. Right. And the way it impacts one, it may not impact another person in that way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do kind of address those, those different areas. And I put, God had me put in there a flexibility around the suggestions. And so it's sort of more uh, written from the perspective of, you know, you may want to try this. Mm -hmm. You may want to, you know, see if this works for you in this way. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're not telling people what to do or definitively this is this is the way you get over. It. Some people go into this secluded space rather than make themselves available or make themselves even vulnerable mm -hmm. to um, sharing with other people. Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, and I, I do talk about it in the book. Um, let me say one of the through lines of the book that's kind of threaded throughout mm -hmm. is this encouraging uh, people to 
allow yourself to process the grief, even though it's painful, Mm -hmm. because when we don't, that can be detrimental to us. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down a quote that I had um, um, from the book that I wanted to share with everyone. It says, when we avoid, ignore, or bury grief Mm -hmm. because we fear it, or we don't think we can face the pain, Mm -hmm. we march down a rabbit hole that leads to an unsafe place. Mm. So really the processing of grief is for you, the individual that's grieving. Mm -hmm. And so one one of the strategies in the book, when you talk about people who are isolating and things like that, that's like one of my superpowers. Mm-hmm. I, I will, when something hits me, I get off alone. I go mm-hmm. off by myself and, you know, I got to, I got to talk to God. I got to sit and think all of those things. But one of the strategies in the book encourages talking. Mm-hmm. It encourages talking to someone and it doesn't just I don't just talk about, oh, you need to talk to someone to, you know, share how you're feeling, you know, share those emotions with another person. Um, But really, I put in there some substance to it in terms of what kinds of people you should be talking to. I mean, definitely don't share your heart with with the person that you know is the office gossip. Don't share your heart with the person you know that is They've always been the Debbie Downer. And so you're sharing your heart with them and you should know what you're going to get back. So be very intentional and mindful about who you are sharing these sensitive, vulnerable places with, because you don't want to, and you don't want to share with a, a family member that might go and confide in, you know, other people in the family that can cause some sort of discord. You just want to uh, be in a place where you're able to be open and honest Mm -hmm. and bring your guard down um, with people who will give you wise counsel, who are good listeners, um, you know, people who are encouraging to you. And I also say that if you don't have people like that in your life, Mm -hmm. definitely look into the possibility of counseling Yes. whether it be a licensed therapist or a minister. And mm-hmm. I even put parameters around those because there are times, um, and I've experienced this as well, where you go in and talk to a therapist or a minister mm-hmm. and they aren't the person that you really need to be talking to. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we all kind of know, just in our knower, mm-hmm. um, if we're in a safe place or not. And, you know, even if you can't put your finger on it, you know, something might not be just right. And so it's a good idea not to share in those moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do, I do share some of those nuggets of, um, you know, how to know if you're in a safe place for sharing. Wonderful. Wonderful. You know, God had me be very intentional as well about, um, incorporating into the book some joy some Mm -hmm. things that are you know that are are good things that that can be done um because even though um there's there's one section um where i talk about honoring Mm -hmm. um and so i i talk about a story of how how a lot of people you may see them doing like candlelight uh vigils vigils and things like that But then I saw a video of a family who got together and did a skydiving Mm -hmm. in honor of a loved one who loved to skydive. Mm -hmm. So um, there there are things in the book uh, from that perspective as well. And um, one of my favorites is um, I have a section called Start. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about hobbies. And I tell the story of this uh, gentleman I had met who lost his wife and he was retired. He didn't have a lot to going on in his day, didn't know what to do with those hours. And his daughter said to him, well, dad, you're a great dancer. You really love to dance. Why don't you take up dancing? Wow. He took a free class at Arthur Murray, Mm -hmm. loved it so much wound up continuing to go and take classes there, wound up going into competitions, Mm. met 
a woman who was passionate about dance as well. Yeah. They got married. Now I felt that coming on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just amazing what can happen, yeah. Yeah. you know, when you open the door to possibilities. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. And you know, the uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I was going to ask you about hope because I know hope is entrenched in this book. The other thing that I, I thought was very important because I kind of think about, um, because people tend to not want to think about their loved ones, you know, when they're going through the grief. I, I just got to stop thinking about it. But how can we stop even in the moment of grieving? and think about that one thing that just warms your heart. In the book, there is a chapter called Remember. That's mm. one of the strategies. And um, I'm reminded of one of the stories that I told about a young man. Um, his mom was a teacher. Mm. And so um, she touched a lot of people's lives uh, and, in high school. And I wound up stumbling on uh, a Facebook page that he had put up in her honor after she died. And he was encouraging former students to tell funny stories and things to remember her by. Yeah. And when I tell you it was so engaging, it was so wonderful. My husband and I went on, we were laughing, we were, you know, tears and everything, but it was good <laughs> tears because there were all these stories and in, encouraged her son to begin to tell stories about her family life, which a lot of us that have been her students didn't know about. Oh. And so he's seeing these stories and he's finding joy and laughing because there are these wonderful stories about her. And it is, he said even once in a post that it was helping him to even remember her differently because he had that insight from others right. about who she was and the, the kinds of things that she did. Wonderful. I love it. I want to know how can people or how will they be able to access this book? It'll be available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And also it will be available on my author website, okay. which is www.patty, so P-A-T-T-Y, rice, R-I-C-E, dot com. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I am thoroughly looking forward to getting several copies. <laughs> I have a large family, so I think we're going to get several <laughs> copies of this book. And I'm going to need all 12 of those strategies. So I thank you so much for being inspired to write such an awesome book. As I said, that's going to impact millions. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. We continue our discussion with Dr. Jonathan Shepard, board certified child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist. Dr. Shepard, thank you so much for joining us on Promising Me Unleashed. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And I'm hopefully, uh, hopefully hoping that all of the people listening today will gather something uh, that will be insightful and utilize in their walks of life. Yes. And I, I, I know that they will. Um, we know that next month we celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to sharing uh, additional information about mental health, but very seldom do people acquaint grief with mental health um, and how grief can impact your mental health. And so I appreciate you for coming on and just speaking with us a little bit more about grief, the impact of grief, what happens when grief is unchecked, and then how we can garner resources and just additional information to help support us uh, for those of us who are dealing with grief. And some of us personally, um, are dealing with grief. And so I thought no better person to come on and kind of share more uh, with our viewers about how we can manage grief. But I think the most important thing is really identifying what grief is. Well, grief is, a, is an emotion. Uh, it is a normal response to the loss of a person or a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be clear that grief does not just occur when someone dies. Mm -hmm. Uh, grief can occur when uh, you are unable to see someone. Grief can occur when you lose 
a job, uh, get fired from a job. Uh, grief can occur when a relationship ends. Um, I hate to say it, it can occur even when a relationship begins, <laughs> depending on what type of relationship. Hey. <laughs> but That's grief, the kind you want to get out real quick. <laughs> absolutely. But grief is a normal emotion. Yes. Uh, it's nothing uh, abnormal, weird, strange about it. You can't fight it. Uh, I tell people that if you don't want to grieve, then don't love. Mm. It's as simple as that. If you never want to grieve and you say, I don't, I just don't want to lose anybody. I got a solution for you. Don't love. Uh, wow. That's the only way to avoid grief is to avoid love. And why it impacts mental health is because grief will damper your, uh, uh, your ability to know your potential. Mm -hmm. it will affect your ability to cope with the normal stresses of life. It will cause you to stop working productively and effectively. And if you allow it, it will hinder you from making a contribution to your community. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shepard, how did you just say that so eloquently <laughs> and so fast? That's because that's the definition of mental health. Mental wow. health is PCWC, is knowing your potential, knowing how you can cope, Understanding that you must work and work effectively and productively and knowing that in the end, it's about you making a contribution to your community. That's what mental health is about. Grief will hit and negative, negatively impact all four of those areas. Okay. Wow. And, and, you know, so many people are dealing with it and really don't know how to, how do you, um, how do you really overcome it? Like, what are some of the building blocks or frame of work that people can kind of put around the grief in order to help them move forward? Well, I tell people, you don't overcome grief. Mm -hmm. Grief is to be managed. Uh, you don't get over the loss of a person. So we have to make sure that we have realistic expectations mm -hmm. when we're talking to people. Um, when people tell you you'll get over it, uh, that's the wrong thing to say, and it's not a true mm -hmm. statement. You learn how to manage grief. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who are faith believers out there, the Bible tells us how to be able to manage grief. It never tells you you're going to get over it. Right. Um, you don't allow it to overtake you mm -hmm. to where you become paralyzed. That's where, again, it intersects with what I talked about regarding your mental health. Grief mm -hmm. will paralyze you. Mm -hmm. It was, it will cause you to stop living. Right. Uh, you might think the person is gone or dead or the relationship dead or whatever, but actually it will cause you to stop living while you are still, or still has breath in your body. Mm -hmm. um, so when you talk about how to manage it, you must understand, as you just said, that it is unique how you un how you deal with your grief reaction is not the same way in which I will deal with my grief reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, you must own it, <laughs> which means it's yours. Right. Um, I cannot grieve like my mother grieves, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of similarity to what I just said to earlier. But if if you listen carefully, there's a there's a little few distinctive qualities or characteristics from what I just said earlier. When mm -hmm. I say own your grief, that means don't shake it. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, try to get rid of it. And then don't try to wear somebody else's grief. Right. That's I very so important. Many, I see so many children wearing their parents' grief and the parents say, oh, little Johnny is grieving. No, you grieving, parent. Mm -hmm. And you're passing that coat on, wearing that coat of grief and uh, it's, it's, it's something that you must uh, own and then know that your grief is unique. And then also, as you manage your grief, you need to look for consistency. Routines are very important, especially during that first phases of the loss. Mm -hmm. So children, when they lose a parent, people want to pull them out of school. Right. That's actually the worst thing you can do. Mm -hmm. They need that consistency. 
to know that things can remain stable. Right. So they may not be able to go to school for the first couple of days if it was especially a traumatic loss, mm -hmm. but keeping them out for the rest of the school year, you're actually harming the child. You're harming the person. Um, so you need to look for routines, get back into those routines. If you're a faith believer, it's not the time for you to doubt your faith. It's not the time for you to drop out of church. It's not the time for you to say, God, where are you at? You left me alone. Mm -hmm. Um, he can handle all of that, but you need to check yourself Right. that uh, you remain consistent with what has got you to this point. Mm -hmm. And that's so be the same principles that will get you over to help you to manage as you move through the grief process. Right. So look, don't let your first emotion be your lasting emotion. Absolutely. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I like the parallel. I like that um, you mentioned consistency because it's the same thing with adults. Um, they curl up in a corner and they stop doing things. Some stop socializing. Some stop going to church. Some stop doing the things that they used to enjoy um, because they're stuck in that grief mode. Um, so how can what are some of the best resources or tools that a person who is grieving, because the reality is right now, um, people are dealing with grief on so many levels, loss of jobs, uh, trying to reinvent themselves career-wise, I know is another uh, area. Some are dealing with the fact that they're not married. Um, you know, um, those are just some real human, you know, things that are happening beyond losing a, a spouse or a sibling. Um, those are some real things that people are encountering now that they don't know how to, to manage those things. And um, where mental health comes into play, um, because I'd mentioned many people would never even equate it grief with mental health. What resources can people kind of look towards? One, to identify if indeed their grieving has crossed the line. Um, you know, and what does that really look like? Um, and then how can they best uh, find those tools that help, that will help them manage that level of grief? So some resources that you can uh, look into and that I would advise and recommend. Number one, if you are, a, if you are a faith believer, you need to rely on your faith. Right. Uh, I am unapologetically a faith believer. I am a born again Christian. Yeah. I make no qualms. No or apologies. Or no apologies <laughs> for that. So number one, let's make sure that you have checked in with your spiritual leader, mm -hmm. all right? So don't forget that. Right. Uh, always make room for your, uh, for the spirit. Always make room, all right? Wise counsel. <laughs> Meditation, okay? So number mm -hmm. one, let's start there. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, there are various programs out there. You were alluding to this earlier. Everyone will experience bad days, as they say, when you're grieving. Mm -hmm. There will be some of us who are experiencing days where we're out of control. And when we're out of control, we're not functioning. We're really disordered. I know people don't like that we're out of control. So I'll just say disordered. Mm -hmm. But disordered means you're unable to function properly. So you're disordered. You're out of control, right. out of order. Um, and when you get to that point, that's when you do need to have a licensed therapist, a licensed mental health professional that you're working with, mm -hmm. all right? Um, and uh, depending on who was listening to this at this time, uh, in Baltimore, uh, where my practice is headquartered, uh, there is a place called Roberta's House, mm -hmm. uh, which has received national uh, recognition uh, through Annette March Greer. And they focus in on areas where people have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. Grief is their specialty. Wow. So, uh, she is one, she is a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't live in the DMV area, mid-Atlantic region, and you can't get to Baltimore, she will help you to find other resources throughout the nation. I know because she's done it for me. Uh, and when my uh, seven-year-old nephew uh, died after a six-day illness. Wow. And so she was helpful for my family who mm -hmm. was down in Houston to find some grieving, uh, find some resources as they, as we all grieved. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I also would say, uh, you know, I work with the Black Mental Health Alliance, which you alluded to me being a board president. So Black Mental Health Alliance, we can maybe help you find a uh, therapist, mental health professional who can work with you through your grief process. This is not the time to run away, mm -hmm. say no one understands me. Uh, that's a lie. We do understand you. Um, I'll say that again. We do understand you. We may not have gone through the same circumstances, but trust me, there are people who've been and walked down the path that you're going down. And so we at Black Men Health Alliance, we want to pair you up, help you with those persons, help those persons who can help you walk down that 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 journey of grief because it really is a journey. Uh, so those are some of the resources. Uh, you want to look into your area. You might even find that you have a chapter, the National Alliance of Mental Illness, mm -hmm. uh, which is, stands for NAMI. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm not mentally ill. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't call you mentally ill. I just said, if you're grieving, your grief is out of order, you're out of order. And <laughs> so anytime that an illness is in your body, something's out of order. Right. So, don't get caught up on that terminology. I know people get offended if you don't use if you use certain words. Uh, we have got to move beyond that because if you're offended by a word and it's stopping you from getting the help that you need, then you really need to get in to get some help because I don't want to see anyone paralyzed from grief mm -hmm. and don't get the help because they're concerned about the who, stigma. What <laughs> said about them. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Dr. Shepard, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about Hope Health Systems Incorporated? So Hope Health Systems is a large mental health freestanding uh, medical organization uh, where I serve as chief medical director. Mm -hmm. Our focus is mental health. We are one of the largest uh, providers of mental health services for children in the whole state of Maryland. Wow. Uh, some may say we're the third largest, only behind uh, University of Maryland, Johns Hopkins, and their hospitals. We're not, a, we're not even a hospital yet. I say right. yet because we are right. looking to open our it, own inpatient unit. I, I was going to ask you, so when you say child time, age range, what are we looking at? 17 and under. Okay. Okay. 17 and under. Yep. And awesome. so that is our, that's our bread and butter Mm -hmm. uh, but it's so amazing how we have expanded in our adult services. So we service the whole family. Okay. Not only do we service the whole family, we provide level of services all the way from the least restrictive to almost, almost the most restrictive once we get the inpatient unit open. Uh, but mental health is our core. We provide school-based uh, treatment. We provide outpatient treatment. We provide treatment within the juvenile detention centers. We have mobile treatment uh, services, geriatric services, care coordination, psycho, psychiatric rehabilitation um, uh, program services. We got it. Wow. Um, uh, Hope Health Systems is a force to reckon with in the Baltimore area when it comes to mental health services. Awesome, awesome. And I'd like to get more information, uh, resource information that people can also uh, contact um, the folks that are actually providing services through Hope Health. So thank you so much for sharing that with us as well. Absolutely. So with Hope Health Systems, we provide direct care services. It's not like Black Men Health Alliance. We do not provide direct care services for the Black Men Health Alliance. Hope Health Services provides direct care services Phone number 410-265-8737. I know people say, well, that's a phone number. That's too fast. No, go to our website, hopehealthsystems.com, and you can go there and you can even fill out a referral if you're in need of direct care services, and it will get to us and we will answer you as speedily as we can. Awesome. Is there a direct contact or way that people can get in contact with you perhaps, or with the Black Mental Health Alliance. Absolutely. You can find me on my website, uh, Dr. Jonathan Shepard. Shepard is spelled like a real shepherd. Uh, <laughs> no A's, mm -hmm. uh, all E's, two H's. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm guiding people. So drjonathanshepherd.com. Awesome. Uh, Black Men Health Alliance, you can look, you can Google us. It's going to come up uh, at the very beginning of mm -hmm. the top of the uh, uh, entry. So you can uh, do that uh, and you'll find all the necessary resources uh, that you need. And uh, you can check me out on some of my social media platforms. Okay. Uh, and that also will provide some help uh, for you too. So hit me up. I look forward to hearing from you. I appreciate this time and uh, I, I pray that all goes well for all those who are out there grieving. You have our support. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on Promising Me Unleashed. Join us on Promising Me Unleashed Thursday, May 21st, in recognition of Mental Health Awareness Month, help to carry on with Jamie Freeney.